Hi, Gary Guth here with BagpipeLessons.net. Let's talk about chanter reeds. You know, back in the olden days when I was playing the bagpipe um, as a kid, because I started, I think I was like 15 when I started playing, you could go to the bagpipe store and the bagpipe, uh, the person running the store would put a box of reeds like this in front of you and you could blow and blow and blow until you found two breeds that you really liked. Um, you know, the days have changed with herpes, AIDS, and the COVID-19 virus. That's totally different now, okay? So a lot of times when you order reeds, um, you don't have any idea what you're getting. They, they, they come easy, medium, and hard. And uh, so you kind of take your chance to see, you know, what you get. So. I'm going to show you some things. I have, this is my uh, reed graveyard. Um, every bagpiper should have a reed graveyard. Um, I don't throw any reeds away unless I absolutely damage them, uh, meaning I break the cane or, or I chip off a piece or something like that. But I, I, I save everything because, um, you know, over a period of time they dry out and so forth. But one of the things that happened to me uh, early in my bagpipe career, I went to a a piping school up in the high Sierras. We went to Lake Sequoia. No, it wasn't that year. It was the following year. I went to a piping school in Marin County uh, and John McClellan was there. He was the head of the Army School of Piping at the time. And he did a class on reed adjustment. And I'll tell you what, that, that was probably the best class I ever had. Uh, and honest to God, because um, he saved, he saved me a lot of money over the years. So here's, a, here's what I need. Here's what you need if you want to be able to do this. Um, you need a pair of right angle. Well, they're like, no, these aren't right angle. These 45 degree angle pliers. And the reason that you need these is because we do two things when we adjust reeds. Um, we close the staple like this using the pliers and the right angle pliers uh, hit the reed together at the same at the same time. So it's not like you're squeezing from one side and then over to the other. And what it does is it uh, it does it makes it even. So when I when I I'm going to show you what I'm going to do with these in a second. So I got these at Ace Hardware, and I think they were less than I think they were like five ninety nine or something. You need one of these. And then the next thing you need is a mandrel. This is a reed mandrel made by Chris Apps. All right, so let me show you. Um, when you're looking for reeds, um, you're looking for two things, okay? You're looking for the sound of the reeds. Okay, so that's a squawk, okay? And that means that the reed is relatively hard. That's a squeak. That means the reed is easy. Okay, so just to give you an idea how how this works, let's see what an easy reed sounds like. Okay, so um, an easy reed uh, is a little tinny sounding, um, but it's also higher in pitch. As you can hear, it was really high. Okay, so. So if I want to make take a read from being easy to harder, um, I put the mandrel in the bottom, like the in the bottom of the reed. The reed is mounted on a on a piece of copper tubing, and and it's uh, cylindrical at the bottom and concave at the top. And then they, you know, they they put the the blades of the reeds together on the concave part, and they wind the hemp around it. And, and you know what, I'm going to tell you right now, if you're ever buying reeds and you see how this reed is shellacked like this, if you're buying reeds and they're not shellacked, I'd send them back. And, and I tell the vendor uh, why you're sending them back um, because there isn't any reason why they shouldn't be shellacked. And if they're not shellacked, what happens is, is that they unwind on you uh, as you're using them. I mean, you're paying 15 to 20 bucks a reed um, you know, you want to make sure that it's not going to fall apart on you. So anyway, I'm, I'm really, you know, I get 
pretty pissed about that when that happens. Okay, so here's what happens. So if I push the mandrel in like this, I'm opening the staple of the reed. That's the that cylindrical part at the bottom. So ah, see now I'm getting a crow sound. I'm getting a squawk. Okay, let's try it in the chanter now and see what happens. All right, so that's a little bit. It's a little bit better. It's got a it's got a ways to go. And it's also, I probably could put more hemp on it, so I'm not, it's not seated so far down in the reed. Okay, so let me open this up. Okay, let's see how that goes. Well, that's not a bad reed, okay? Let's try another one. Let's see. Um, how about this one? Let's see. All right, so that's kind of a that's kind of a, a squeak. That's in between a squeak and a squawk. We'll see how uh, how it sounds. Now, I I happen to think uh, that's not a bad sound. I think it uses a lot of air. Now, one of the things that you could do. Um, if, if a read is too hard, let's, let's make this just a little bit harder and see what happens. All right, so that's got the crow that we were looking for. Oh, that doesn't sound good. Let's see, what do we, I wonder what we did with that. I think, uh, I, oh, it's, if you look at it, see it's open too far on the top. Okay, so I can, I can squeeze the lips together like this. See what I'm doing? I'm squeezing them together. We'll see if that makes a difference. Well, uh, it's a little bit uh, unpredictable. So maybe I'll put that as, now let's, oh, let's play with it a little bit more. Let's see if I close it a little bit, well, that makes a difference. So I'm gonna close it, watch this. So, yeah, so you're gonna to learn to feel the staple moving. Okay, that's kind of a, a, a squeak. This is a relatively easy read. No, that's not it, that's not it. Yeah, okay, so that's getting better as we go along. So you know what, I might put that aside. It probably needs a little more hemp on it. That would uh, that would certainly make it play differently. Uh, let's find another one. All right, so this reed has a, a piece of the corner broken off. See that? Let's just see if that makes a difference. That's not a bad sounding read, uh, even with a corner broken off. So the point, the, the point of all of this is, is that you're going to receive, when you order reads, if you order five at a time, um, you're gonna, and you say you order five easy ones, you know, they still might be harder for you to blow, okay? And so what you wanna do, you wanna do two things. You can open the read with a mandrel or you can close the read with the pliers. Closing the reed makes the reed easier. Opening the mandrel makes it, uh, with the mandrel makes it harder, okay? You can, you can open and close the reed until the cows come home, okay? Because you're not taking any material off, okay? The minute you start sanding a reed, um, it's gone, you know? Uh, unless you know exactly how to sand it on on each side and how much to take off on each side, you know, you don't have a lot of control over that, okay? So, you know, I can open and close reeds all day long uh, to make them, uh, to make them all playable. I, you know, I'm pretty, I, I'm pretty lucky because every time I order reeds and I need to adjust them and stuff, I can make them all playable, okay? And, and, and I can do that without taking any uh, any material off. 
Uh, you know, so reeds reeds come in in straight. This is a this is a a straight cut reed. Um, actually, it might have been a shoulder cut reed, and I sanded the shoulders off. Shoulder cut reeds are a lot stronger uh, to blow. They're loud. They sound good and stuff. Um, but what you don't want to do is get hurt uh, over blowing a reed that's too strong for you. Okay, so. Um, and of course, it certainly doesn't do anything for your motivation if you're trying to play uh, your bagpipe and you can't because the chanter reed is too hard. Um, this is a way for you to take control of of that and so forth. But but you have to be you have to be willing to make an investment in a number of reeds, and you also have to be willing to to be brave enough to make the adjustments. You have to practice making adjustments back and forth. You know, uh, opening opening the reeds with a mandrel and closing them with the pliers. All right. So I hope I was able to answer your questions. The other the other part about well, one more thing. The other part about doing this is is that sometimes as you open and close, uh, you know, the reeds. Um, you're going to affect the pitch of of a couple of the notes. Okay, so you know, in in this in this particular case, the reed that I was playing, uh, the high G was sharp and the D was sharp. So I put a little tape on on both of those holes so that I got the sound that I wanted. Okay, so uh, overall, if you have any questions about this, please let me know. This is Gary Guth at BagpipeLessons.net.